Pope Paul VI died on August 6, 1978. On August 26, Cardinal Albino Luciani was elected Pope. He took the name John Paul I. John in honor of John XXIII and Paul in honor of Paul VI. He was an ardent feminist and was known to refer to God publicly in the feminine. He refused to be crowned Pope and planned to melt down the papal tiara and sell it for the poor. He also planned something else no one expected. He planned to rid the Vatican hierarchy of members of the P2 Masonic Lodge by appointing them to obscure posts in far-off lands. His big mistake was meeting the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Vilo, also pegged for dismissal, to discuss the plans. The fateful meeting is recounted briefly in this Italian documentary, The Last Days of John Paul I. Alle 18.30 arriva nell'appartamento il segretario di Stato, Jean Villot. Si intrattiene con il Papa più di un'ora. All'ordine del giorno sembra nomine, spostamenti, sostituzioni. Sembra ci sia un franco scambio di opinioni. The next morning at 4.30 a.m., the Pope was discovered dead by his housekeeper, Sister Vizenza, on the 33rd day of his pontificate. She summoned the Secretary of State, Cardinal Villot, who upon entering the room, removed a bottle of medication that was next to the Pope's bed, as well as the Pope's final will, and a recently drawn up document detailing who would be purged from the hierarchy. These items would never be seen again. Cardinal Villot proceeded to have the Pope's body embalmed so that no autopsy could be done. He then lied about virtually every aspect of the event and would meet his own death only six months later. And what does this have to do with Cardinal Siri? It shows that criminal elements are so entrenched in the Vatican that it is virtually impossible for a real Pope to ascend to the papal throne and do what needs to be done. It also gives us an indication of how long Cardinal Siri would have lived had he taken office and tried to clean house and restore the church. Which brings us to our next subject, the October 1978 conclave, where Cardinal Siri is elected again and put under duress, and the exclusive interview he gave on the eve of the conclave, detailing what he would do if elected. In October 1978, 20 years after he was first elected Pope and prevented from exercising his office, Cardinal Siri will enter the conclave for the fourth and final time. In the days leading up to the conclave, Cardinal Siri is portrayed negatively in the media. It is repeatedly reported to an emotional public that he criticized the recently deceased Pope John Paul I. With major publications like Time and Newsweek joining in on cue, one has to wonder how organized and powerful a force it was that wished to prevent Cardinal Siri from taking the papal chair and restoring order in the church. Apparve e scomparve come un richiamo di Dio, ma visse un dramma. Then, on the eve of the conclave, Cardinal Siri gave an exclusive interview to a reporter from the Turin newspaper. The reporter agreed not to run the story until after the conclave was over. However, the story appeared on the front page of the newspaper the following morning and was delivered to each of the cardinals before they entered the conclave. The opening paragraph of the article explained what Cardinal Siri intended to do if elected. Revoke the disastrous changes of John XXIII and Paul VI. After the conclave, it was widely reported that it had been this interview that prevented Siri from becoming Pope and cleared the way for the election of John Paul II. But was it really? Abemus Papam! Sancte Hermane Ecclesiae Cardinalem more revelation on the extent to which a Siri papacy was sabotaged was given by Vatican insider Malachi Martin in one of his final interviews. In the interview, Father Martin was asked about who else could have been elected instead of John Paul II, and the audience is treated to a most shocking reply. 
instead of John Paul II, he had the choice of Cardinal Siri of Genoa, who mm -hmm. would have done exactly what I'm to say I would do. And he was elected Pope. He got the votes in the same conclave in October 1978. And he was told was it by a little handwritten note that if he accepted, he would die, that his family would die. So he refused the pontificate. 